Hey everyone, my name is Ted, and today I'm going to be discussing the improper sanitization of special elements using SQL commands, also known as SQL injection. In this PowerPoint, we will discuss the technical overview of the problem, as well as examples of how it is exploited. After that, I'll discuss detection methods for this issue, and finally, how to go about avoiding the error. Let's start with the technical overview. Essentially, this issue occurs whenever user-controlled input is used to construct parts of SQL statements used by software. Usually when this happens, a user will simply be entering in their username or searching for an item in a database. However, some malicious users may use these fields to enter in queries that could end up modifying or exploiting the software in various ways. Secure software will recognize and deny these attacks. However, this bug occurs when software does not properly clean up elements from the user that could end up modifying components downstream. Malicious inputs can exploit a variety of security issues such as bypassing security checkpoints or inserting statements that modify the backend database. Now let's go over a few technical statistics about SQL injection, starting with its prevalence. Because SQL makes no distinction between control and data planes, and because SQL is so commonly used in data-rich applications, weakness prevalence for SQL injection is quite high. Fortunately, there are many simple ways to mitigate this issue, a few of which I'll go over later in this video, and as such, the mitigation cost of this issue is low. Also, this type of attack is very easy to detect and exploit because of how common and effective it is, and as such, has a high attack frequency. The consequences of SQL injection are numerous and have varying levels of severity. SQL injection can lead to unauthorized viewing of sensitive data, data loss, security bypassing, and various other malicious activities. There are ways to detect and prevent SQL injection, including automated static analysis and manual analysis. Automated static analysis can be used to minimize the number of malicious SQL injections, however, might not recognize when proper input validation is being performed, leading to false positives. Manual analysis can also be useful for finding this weakness, but might not be able to have the desired code coverage within a time constraint. Also, attacker awareness of this issue is high because of the popularity of SQL in data-rich applications, making it a very important issue to be aware of when creating applications that might be vulnerable to injection. Now let's look at an example of SQL injection. In this example, the code intends to execute a line essentially saying, select everything from items where owner equals username and item name equals item name. If the person whose username is Ted enters in the item name in the SQL query as item name or A equals A, then the query becomes select everything from items where owner equals Ted and item name equals item name or A equals A. By adding the or A equals A into the item name, the expression will always evaluate to true and thus the user will be able to view items in this database owned by anyone irregardless of their specified owner. Now let's discuss a few more examples of issues that can be caused by SQL injection. One is confidentiality issues. Similar to the example from the last slide, SQL injection can lead to unauthorized people gaining access to sensitive data through SQL queries. It is also possible for people to use SQL injection to receive username and password combinations and access accounts of other users, which raises authentication concerns. Authorization concerns also occur as people are able to potentially use SQL injection to improperly change information they should not have access to. Integrity is one last concern as people are potentially able to delete information through SQL injection. As I mentioned earlier, there are a few easy ways to detect and prevent SQL injection. One of the ways is with automatic static analysis tools. These tools can automatically detect when SQL injection is being performed and prevent it from happening. However, these tools sometimes lead to false positives, which are warnings produced even though there are no security consequences. It also sometimes leads to false negatives, which is when it cannot detect items that do have security consequences. This can be caused by the use of custom API functions or third-party libraries that can directly invoke SQL commands. It is also possible to use manual analysis to discover SQL injection. The benefit here is that you can easily tell when there is malicious queries being sent However, it is sometimes difficult to achieve desired code coverage within limited time constraints. Now let's discuss ways to avoid this error. First, it is important to use languages, libraries, and frameworks that make it easier to generate properly encoded output. Using persistence layers such as Hibernate and Enterprise Java Bean can help you achieve protection against SQL injection. It is also important to make sure and follow the principle of least privilege, which helps to mitigate the level of access certain users are granted and also ensures that users can only change and delete information that they should have access to. SQL injection is interesting because it is very common but also very easy to avoid. 
It has the potential to cause terrible damage, especially with such high attacker awareness surrounding this exploit. The main thing that we can do to avoid it is to be aware of the risk it poses and to use tools at our disposal to defend from it. Thank you.